Hey, what's going on guys? So uh, today we're talking about the knife that used to be in my car. So recently I did a video talking about my experience with Carvana, which was overall very good. And uh, reading the comments, I was actually taken back a little bit. I was kind of surprised. Uh, I kind of figured there'd be people who said, ah, Carvana's a rip, the cars are too expensive, which people said. And some people said, yeah, I was kind of considering that, which I figured some people might say. Um, but what I wasn't expecting is all the focus on this knife. So first of all, let me give you a quick little background of that video. Um, I was literally walking out the door to get in the car and go get an inspection. Um, I got my license plate, my Pennsylvania plate, um, probably a month ago, maybe a month and a half, something like that. And I just have not had a chance to get an inspection done. So I've been riding dirty. You know what I'm saying? Taking a chance of getting that, that ticket for, uh, for not having an inspection. In Pennsylvania, we need a state inspection. So I hate it. You know, it's another money grab, in my opinion. But it is what it is. So, uh, you know, I follow the law as much as possible, which you may disagree with uh, as I continue this video. But anyway, uh, I was going to get the inspection done. And literally, as I'm like opening the front door, I thought, hey, let me grab my GoPro because I'm going to have some, some free time. Maybe I'll make a video. So that's what I did. I grabbed the GoPro, grabbed the mount, which hangs very low, by the way. The, the mount's like this long uh, with all the connections and stuff. And it's like a suction cup mount. And so I grabbed it, went in the car, started the car up, let it warm for a second, and uh, put the you know, mount on everything. And I thought, hmm, what am I going to talk about? I thought, well, duh, I'm, you know, I'm driving to get the, the car done. Why don't we talk about the car? Let's talk about Carvana. So it wasn't a very planned video, and the mount I put in the middle, like let's say this is the windshield, here's the rear view mirror. I put the actual mount right underneath the rear view mirror so it wasn't in my way. Um, I didn't want to obstruct my view, so to speak. You know, I mean, I want to be really to be distracted, to be honest, because it was starting to rain really bad, like literally when I get in the, got in the car, and then it stopped immediately. <clears throat> so as I'm driving, I figured I would I'd start recording, and then it started raining again, of course, after I turned the camera on, which clearly you saw in that video. Now, this knife was hanging, you know, off to the side here, and I honestly didn't even know. I had no idea it was even in view. It's not like I was hiding it from you. You guys know who watch my videos. I mentioned that I have a rear view mirror knife. I, I've had it for years and years. I've had it on multiple cars. This exact one has been on my Chrysler 200 for six years. Uh, before this one, I had a uh, CRKT um, Dogfish that was hanging from my uh, 87 Monte Carlo. You know, I've always had a neck knife for, for literally like decades now. So, well, it's a neck knife, but it's always a, a smaller knife, but I always have it from my rear view. And the reason for that is that here's your first person perspective. You're sitting in the car and you need to cut something, right? You could dip down into your pocket, but you're sitting. It's kind of squished. It's out of the way. Maybe you have to lean your, your back off to the left side to grab it, you're gonna clip it, okay, now you're using it, now you gotta put it back. It's a little frustrating, because now, oh man, you know, I'm, I'm driving, I can't, no, it's right here. That's it, you just pull it out and use it, right? Believe it or not, Christina uses this way more than I do, because usually I'm driving, so I don't have to cut stuff, but she's maybe opening a package or, or doing something, whatever the case is, could be a string in her shirt, uh, and she has a, a pocket knife most of the time too, but it's right there. It's convenient. So she just grabs that, does what she has to do. Sometimes she'll open mail in the car, things like that. And uh, it's worked out great. It's fantastic. But um, <laughs> I read all your comments and a lot of people were, were concerned. And I have to say thank you because, uh, you know, I, I appreciate it. I really do appreciate it because I know that most of it is genuine concern. Hey, Jeff, little uh, tap on the shoulder there. Yeah, you might not want to have a knife hanging from the rear view and, mm, you know, I know that knife and I know it's double-edged, uh, not allowed in Pennsylvania and just a little tap on the shoulder, just, uh, just so you know. So, yes, I am aware of two major things that are wrong with this picture. Number one, it doesn't matter that it's a knife, okay? Anything hanging from your rear view mirror is not allowed by law in Pennsylvania. It's an obstruction of your view. Doesn't matter if it's a fuzzy dice, you know, or you got a little picture of your grandma hanging, or a knife. It doesn't, it doesn't really matter what it is. You're not supposed to hang stuff from your rear view. I know that. Number two, all right, which I've mentioned here and there over the years, is that double-edged blades are not technically allowed in Pennsylvania. You can own them, but you're not supposed to carry them. So I got kind of strike one, strike two there. But hear me out here for a second, and I do not condone you know, fiddling with the law. But I've been pulled over in Pennsylvania in the last decade, probably five, six times, maybe seven, something like that. It's usually speeding. Uh, one time I, I went through a, 
uh, like a stop sign, I didn't come to a complete stop. You know, you know what they say, California roll isn't just a sushi. So uh, that was a dumb mistake. But then speeding, it's not like I'm doing, you know, 120, 130. I I'm like, maybe on the highway, 65. I got pulled over for doing 67. I got pulled over for doing 80. You know, and by the way, when I got pulled over for doing 80, I was actually passing someone at that point. You know, there's plenty of times, I'm, I'm not perfect, I I've sped before, you know. Uh, I've gotten into road rage situations where I've done 125 miles an hour because some jerk is you know, playing with me and I, I want to get away and now we're kind of doing our thing back and forth, which again, totally stupid. Do not do that. I, I'm past those years. Those are my younger years. Um, but when I do actually get pulled over, it's something silly. It's like when I don't even realize that I'm speeding uh, or I'm barely speeding. But besides Pennsylvania, I've been pulled over in New York State uh, maybe two times. And I've been pulled over in Connecticut a handful of times in the last decade or so. And every single time, New York, uh, Pennsylvania, and Connecticut, I had this knife or something very similar hanging from the rearview mirror. Not once has any officer mentioned it. You can clearly see it's a knife, okay? It's never been an issue. Doesn't mean it's right. There's no excuse there at all. Doesn't mean it's right. It's just something that was never an issue. So I always had it on there. Um, there's been times where I've had my gun shown, like I got pulled over and my gun is in the center console, especially when I was carrying, you know, I carried my 1911 a couple times and in the car, I would take it out of the holster because it would dig into my side and I would literally have it in the cup, you know, so it'd be in the, in the, the cup holder. Uh, I got pulled over with that 1911 sitting there. Now, obviously, depending on who you are and where you are, that will get you shot these days, right? Maybe call it luck. Um, I don't know. And I know what some of the comments are going to say and I would say that's wrong. <laughs> so don't don't post that comment because uh, yes, certain people are certainly targeted. I, I do not deny that. Um, but in my case, I just I've always been okay. Never had a problem. Uh, there's been cases where you know, and when I get pulled over, if I had the gun in the cup holder, I'll tell you what I don't do. I don't take it out and try to shove it under the seat or hide it. I don't do anything. If I happen to get pulled over, I pull over immediately. I do not let the officer follow me the second those lights goes on or lights go on. I'm right off to the side. Shut the car off. I actually roll all the windows down, front and back. They all go down. Car gets shut off, and my hands go out the window. Okay? Not together. Not like this. Okay? <laughs> Which, obviously, if people saw that viral video recently, there was a uh, military guy at a gas station. And um, I guess, you know, there was something that was going on, and, and he put his hands out, but he, like, cuffed his hands together, and it kind of looks like he's holding something, right? Anyway, so my hands are literally out the window, or in some cases, they were both on the steering wheel. They're clearly visible. So as that officer approaches me, not only are the windows down, doesn't matter if it's day or night, they can clearly see in the car. They can see everyone who's in the car. Most times there's just me and Christina, maybe Gus was in the back at the time. Um, and my hands are visible. That's extremely important. I'm in Pennsylvania, so they're used to seeing people with guns. So both officers literally said the same thing. They're like, oh, do you have a, a permit for that gun? Uh, to conceal carry and I said uh, yes, I do uh, would you like to see it and they said yes and in both cases I Slowly grabbed my wallet out of my my back pocket mind you the guns right there and uh, You know I took out my concealed carry permit and showed them because in the vehicle in Pennsylvania Even though you can legally carry a firearm openly without a permit when you get inside of a vehicle That's considered concealing your weapon. So if you have a gun Inside your car you're concealing it and in that case you need to have a concealed carry permit that's just our state law. So, you know, if you're openly carrying without a permit, you just can't get in any vehicles. You either have to walk where you're going or use a bicycle or, or a motorcycle or something. I guess motorcycle doesn't really count because it's still not really concealed. But anyway, so I, I've never had a problem with knives being shown, guns being shown. Never been an issue. The focus was on what I did wrong. And uh, half the time I, I got a warning and half the time I got a ticket. And I've learned from my mistakes. I don't, I don't really speed anymore. You know, I, I mean, I, I'll speed when I'm passing someone occasionally, but it's just very situational. If I'm stuck behind a, a trailer and he's kicking up dirt and stuff and rocks, you know, maybe I'll just punch it and, and get past him doing 100 real quick and then get back over. Uh, I've done that. I'm guilty of that. But generally speaking, I'm sitting with crews on and just trying to get where I'm going safely and, and slowly and with the best gas mileage possible. The older they get, the, uh, the less you care about having fun on the road and the more you care about the expense of driving. So that is definitely my concern these days is getting the best... Uh, possible MPG. So, uh, yeah, I, I mean, I've had my fun, and of course, this is a wonderful, beautiful car that I'm driving, and I, I've had some fun with it since I've gotten it, but, you know, I've kind of gotten out of my system, and there is an appropriate time to do that kind of stuff, and there's very inappropriate times.
So anyway, back to the video. This thing's hanging there. People are commenting. Eh, shouldn't have that. Now, yes, I know. And yes, you're right. You guys are 100% right. But what does the title of this video say? It says something like, because of you, I no longer carry this in my car. And there was one person, one comment that I read, and it made me think. And at first I'm like, eh. And then I thought about it more. And then I thought about it more. And then it went out in my car, and I brought this back inside permanently. So I no longer will be carrying a knife from my rear view mirror. So the big question is why? Why, Jeff? What'd they say? I gotta know. I gotta know what they say. They pointed out the very obvious, by the way, which completely, you know, right over my head. Never even thought about this, ever. They point out the obvious fact that if I get into a serious accident, that there's a good probability that this is gonna fly out of the sheath. <laughs> and where's it going? Is it going in my eye? Is it going up my nose? Is it going through my lip, my cheek? Is it gonna like veer off and hit the airbag? You know, is it gonna hit Christina? And honestly, that was my, they didn't, they didn't say all this. This is just stuff going through my head. And as soon as I realized that, yeah, it's possible. It's possible, maybe unlikely, but still possible that I get into an accident, this thing flies out and hits my wife. And I'm not cool with that. So immediately, I literally went outside and took this off. And uh, I'm not gonna have that hanging. Now, you know, in hindsight, yeah, of course, I, I should be having it hanging anyway. Even if I never got into an accident, even though I got away with it, does not make it right. So the fact that it's double-edged, not cool. The fact that it's something hanging from the rear view, not cool. So I've learned my lesson, but really I have to say, it's the idea that my wife may get hurt, you know, in an accident from it, that um, they really put it over for me. And I'm like, yeah, no, I can't, I can't take that chance. I'm not willing to take that chance for having another knife. As you guys know, I almost always have my neck knife. There's been maybe in the last year, I don't even think it happened last year in this last year, but during the, the Rona, there was one day that I remember that I forgot my neck knife. I was literally rushing out the door. I was you know putting my EDC on. I just never put it on. And I felt so weird. I'm like, oh man, I kept tugging on my shirt. I'm like, oh, no neck knife. <laughs> so uh, yeah, it happens occasionally. And having this in the car, is just convenient. But 99.99999% of the time, I got a neck knife on already. I got a pocket knife on. I may have two or three pocket knives, right? I have a knife in my keys. So is it necessary now? No, it's not. And the, the thought again that someone could possibly get hurt because of it, it's changed my mind. So I will never have a neck knife or any knife hanging from my rear view. So there you go. So I just wanted to touch upon this a little bit. And by the way, let's talk about the actual knife. This is a United Cutlery mini boot knife. I've had this one for a really long time, at least a decade. Um, actually it goes in the sheath very nicely goes in either direction because obviously it's uh, you know the same shape either way this one has the combo edge on it all right let's uh, zoom in even more see those markings all right sub commander this is an AUS 6 which is a very soft steel I've actually sharpened this quite a few times because like I said it actually gets used but we have a full plain edge on the one side um, and then we have a, a combo edge on the other side the serrations actually work very well all right they're very thin the scallops are not too close together so it really does work. I mean, it's super, super sharp. Even though we got a, a you know, soft steel, I do maintain the edge on this very, very nicely. And it's just kind of cool. It's got a nice little grip to it. And I like it. And uh, again, like opening packaging stuff, it just it pierces in very easily because it has that fine point that's sharpened on both sides. So there's little resistance. So again, my wife and I are in the car. I'm driving somewhere. She just got the mail or something. Or I got the mail. And uh, she wants to zip open a package. She just grabs it. It's just convenient. But... Plenty of knives. I still have a knife in my glove box. I still have a knife, uh, you know, multiple knives on me. She usually has a knife either in her purse or on her person. So, you know, having to reach down, taking an extra second for that, not a big deal. So I've literally changed my mind about something again because of you. One person out there, which I greatly thank because it's just something that it, it seems obvious, but I never thought about that. I never considered that can be a danger in an accident. It might seem silly or stupid. Um, but it's just something that never crossed my mind, you know, so it wasn't an issue. But now that I'm aware of it, I've changed what I've done. So you guys give me so much feedback and so many, you know, good responses and replies and comments over the years and stuff. I've learned so much from you guys and I've literally changed some things in my life because of you. And I appreciate it, you know. I mean, it goes both ways. People thank me all the time for stuff. I'm like, hey, I'm just, just sharing my hobbies, just doing what I'm doing. 
Um, but it does go both ways, and I really appreciate you guys just as much as you appreciate me. So thank you for that. Now, a quick note, because I did see a comment that was quite annoying, and that was someone saying that Carvana paid me for that video. I wish. I wish Carvana paid me for that video, but they didn't. In fact, I don't think that there's anyone on YouTube that's being sponsored by, by Carvana. Um, if they are, I'm certainly not aware of it, and I don't like sponsors, as you guys know. So it's just not something that's, that's true, but it's annoying when people... I, I saw the comment, and then there was like some thumbs-ups, like, yeah, Jeff's getting paid... No, unfortunately, I have to pay every single penny for the very real loan that I took out from the bank and, and pay Carvana. And as far as uh, the actual review, I mean, I don't even think it was that great. Overall, it was a great experience. But keep in mind, I hated their finance uh, position. I did not use them for financing. And I hated the fact that it arrived damaged. I'm very glad that they made it right. But it could have been a lot better. Do you know what I'm saying? It, it could have just arrived how it was supposed to arrive. So there are some negatives there. People did point out that a lot of the cars are overpriced compared to other places. And But I mentioned in the video, you want to price shop. If you're looking for a specific car, don't just use Carvana just because you want to try it out. You know what I'm saying? Get the best deal. I've always said that. It doesn't matter if you're buying a knife or a car. Price shop and, and go with what's most comfortable to you. It just happened to be convenient for me. And in this specific car, which is a very specific car, I happened to get the best deal at the time. Do you know what I'm saying? but it doesn't necessarily mean that there's always gonna be a deal there. I have looked at other cars since people commented on it. Uh, actually, this morning, I was looking at a couple like random Toyota Camrys just to kind of get a feel for it, and I was looking elsewhere, and yeah, they could be a little bit more expensive with higher mileage. So it's not always gonna be the best option. But again, like everything else that you see on these, on these videos that I make, I'm just sharing my experience. I have no motive. I'm just telling you guys what's up, what's going on in my life. That is it, you know? Take it with a grain of salt, you know? Don't just listen to me. I've said that for years. If I do a video on a knife, I'm like, yeah, hey, I love this knife. Don't just go buy the knife. Look around. See what other people have to say about it. Really research it. You guys, a lot of you work very hard for your money, so you should be using it wisely. But I know a lot of people do appreciate my opinions on things, and, and I'm glad. I'm glad to hear that. Uh, so that's why I continue to share them. But that's all it is. Just an opinion and uh, sharing my experience. Just a little story time. But uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed that video. As far as the, the other comments, people want to see more about um, you know fixing your credit, or especially if you're younger and you don't have credit yet. I think I will make a video on that. I don't know when, but uh, it is a good subject that I like to talk about because I know it could help a lot of people out there. Um, the, how the credit systems work, no one truly knows the mathematics of how they calculate your credit score. However, it's very public information on some of the factors and how important they are. You know, there's certain things that people might not know. Having one credit card, that's okay. But having 20 credit cards, that's fantastic. But there's an important detail there. You don't use them. So I will certainly, and you're like, what do you mean? Why would you have a credit card if you didn't use it? I'm gonna get into these details. I will do a video uh, on this subject in the future. Um, but everyone's situation is very different, so I'm just going to give just some generic tips, some things that I've learned along the way that, that are different. Because especially if you're older, like I talk to my parents about this stuff all the time, about finance things and, and my experience compared to them. And like credit worked totally different back in like the you know late 70s and 80s and stuff. Um, it was very different. What was good then is bad now and vice versa. You know, So if you're older... And you have, you know, 20, 30, 40 years into, you know, having credit cards and a credit score and stuff. You may be thinking you're doing the good thing, but you're not, you know. So even some of the older people watching could uh, or possibly benefit from some of this information. Um, but anyone could, could obviously better their credit score. It takes time. It's not something that happens overnight. But there's certainly some things I'll talk about uh, in the future. So stay tuned for that video. Again, no idea when. It'll be another time randomly where I'd have just a little window a chunk of nothing going on, and I just feel like talking about it. That's when I'll, I'll post that video. But uh, I, I will do it, just a matter of when. So that's all. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, if you watch the uh, Carvana thing and you're like, yeah, I want to hang a knife from my rear view, I don't think it's a good idea anymore. So that's my stance on it. I've, uh, I've changed my mind, thanks to one viewer. So you know who you are out there. Thank you very much. I'm sorry I forgot your name. I was going to give you a little uh, shout-out. But you can watch the first video and see that comment. Because um, I do appreciate it. It literally really made me think about it and went, yeah, you know, maybe that's dumb. And uh, I stopped doing it. And I want to share that with everyone. That's it for now, guys. Thanks so much for watching. Hope you have a wonderful day. And I will see you tomorrow with a brand new video. Take care.